Hello and welcome to Pronunciation Through Reading. I'm Marco. Let's get straight into the introduction. English is not easy. Well, <laughs> English is quite difficult, especially because it's typically not phonetic. There are many rules to follow, silent letters, similarly spelt words, and they sound differently and vice versa. So foreigners typically find it very challenging. Most foreign languages and pronunciation don't even share many similarities with English. So it's one of those big challenges the teachers face. So material preparation for learning is important. You decide on the passage, you choose the appropriate level of English, and you would avoid, you avoid too many words. And then you make it relevant or interesting. Remember, you need to keep the learner engaged for the learning process. Now, I recommend you use a glossary often. New words are discussed and noted in a glossary. I use a spreadsheet. You include the meaning, at synonyms, if you like, and the phonetic pronunciation in the glossary. Review the glossary regularly. I do recommend that. And this helps them memorize their growing vocabulary and for you to keep a track of that. Remember, it's quality over quantity. A few paragraphs of text can provide plenty of material for a single session. And audio recording the passages is a great idea because then they've got a reference. If they have small tracks that they can listen to later after the class and on their own, they can repeat and, and, and learn those um, passages on their own and always have that reference with them. So it's a great idea for the students to keep that. There are six steps for pronunciation, so let's go through those now. This is a very simple six-step basic process. And it, the step number one would be to read out the same text up to one sentence or even half a sentence, and then the student will repeat it. They'll copy the pronunciation that you've given them as best as possible. So you do that and repeat it again. Try to target, as a step three, those difficult words. So now you know where the challenges that they're having are. You target those words and you use drills to repeat those words and slowly get them to say them correctly. You use the various um, techniques, of course, to do that. Now, when there are new words and difficult words, you should mark them for later addition to the glossary or just include them straight away. If you have access to the glossary, you can quickly add it there. Uh, briefly define the new words as well during the passage reading so that they get some context of what the word is used for. In step number four, the student should do a final good reading of the sentence and then you move on to the next sentence. After, in step five, you've done maybe a paragraph or four or five sentences, then you repeat the whole paragraph again and get them to read it. And this time you're focusing on how they read the paragraph with pitch, with rhythm. Um, you're trying to avoid monotone reading. That's the key here. So you focus on their phrasing. You could do this one sentence at a time and narrow the challenges there. Uh, and as they improve it, then eventually get them to do the whole paragraph again. And that's why these drills take time in your lesson. So be mindful of that. Then step six, you've done the first paragraphs and now you've, you're moving on to the next paragraph. And you repeat all the previous steps and that will help them with the mastery of the passages you've selected. So let's move on to the next part, specific and practical techniques to use. So, of course, feedback from the teacher to the learner is critical. You need to target those mispronounced words and let them know of their progress with that. But don't linger on too long. Try to move on. If there are serious challenges and there's uh, no way to really... It'll take maybe several sessions to get through certain pronunciation, then, okay, treat it as a more of a long-term objective and focus on it next session, and so on. Also, do give them positive feedback. If they're saying something correctly, well, that's great. You let them know that. Um, as well, uh, repeating drills on difficult words. Let's talk about this. You need to break up difficult words into syllables. 
you need to use shorter and simpler words or similar sounding words. Maybe they are similar sounding, but they use different spelling and mean different things, but they're so close to the word you're trying to achieve that you can use that as an example. And you can compare slightly different words to create a reference for the learner. So there's a slightly different word that they know, and you use that as a base. And from there, you try to bring them in to learn the new word, which is similar sounding. And sometimes the native language uh, of the learner, if you're aware of it and you know some of the words or some of the expressions, maybe you can use that to your advantage and go ahead and, f and use, find some of those similar sounding expressions and sounds from their own native language and let them know, look, when you're trying to say this word, actually it's quite similar to a word you already use in your own native language. Let's try to figure out the differences between them and try to get them to use those sounds into the new word. Uh, most likely it'll be the, the spelling of the new word that throws them off and it's so different to the way they would normally spell that phonetic sound in their own language and that's the difficulty, that's the challenge. Of course, there'll be new sounds that they've never been able to speak before, never used, and you'll, they'll need to um, know the tongue, the appropriate tongue and mouth exercises, which you'll have to teach them. So there'll be things that you already have in your toolbox, and you'll have to uh, be able to teach those, of course, as needed, especially for early uh, beginner uh, learners. Then, of course, you drill uh, all these with combining sounds and similar sounds until you get your target word achieved. Moving on to the next slide, simple tips. Firstly, insist that the learner speaks slowly and clearly. Let them know that there are many famous narrators like Morgan Freeman, which we have probably all heard, um, who does speak slowly and uh, it, let them know that it's completely fine to do that. There's no advantage to speaking quickly if it's not even very clear and easy to understand for the listener. The other thing is get the student into the habit of repeating your words because a lot of your session will be spent where you will say words and then they'll have to repeat them. So there'll be a call and response, call and response. Get them used to that process. You shouldn't have to prompt them each time. Another thing is maintain steady progress throughout the lesson. Small bite size instructions are great. Uh, avoid overwhelming the student, uh, avoid too much information. Be mindful of wasting valuable lesson time. So keep track of the lesson time. Uh, the drills will already take up a lot of time, so be wary of that. And avoid long explanations or discussions where you can avoid them. As a final point, voice typing is interesting. A lot of word processing software today often have a transcribing feature where you can speak into it and it'll type for you. So voice typing. If your learner can actually achieve a level of English where they can use voice typing correctly, where the computer can understand and transcribe the learner's words into correct, uh, a correct transcription, then that would be positive feedback that they're on the right track and speaking correctly and clearly. Let's now listen to an example of me speaking with a learner and getting them to repeat a certain passage phrase of level B2 English. Mr. Carter wiped the sweat from the back of his neck. Mr. Carter wiped the sweat from the back of his neck. Mr. Carter wiped the sweat. Mr. Carter wiped the sweat. Wiped. Wiped the sweat. The sweat. From the back. From the back. Of his neck. Of his neck. Of his neck. Of his neck. Mr. Carter wiped the sweat from the back of his neck. Mr. Carter wiped the sweat from the back of his neck. Mr. Carter wiped the sweat from the back of his neck. Mr. Carter wiped 
the sweat from the back of his neck. From this example, we could see how the learner progressed through the sample passage and got the phrase right in the end. Let's take a look at preparing the learner. Pronunciation, learning and drills are challenging, so they take time. So it's important to prepare the learner in advance that you're going to be spending a lot of time on these things. Let them understand that there are benefits to drills uh, that are repetitive like reading and listening. Use simple analogies. Let them know that learning is like uh, music, uh, muscle memory, uh, sports, where you need to practice using that muscle and a lot of repetitive action will lead to the mastery of that, especially with language. And keep up the interest and motivation because it is a long process. Use interesting material, uh, read interesting passages and try to relate it to scenarios that are realistic or practical or of interest for the actual learner. And constant interaction is important uh, for the motivation of the learner. So cater to the appropriate age, if they're children, uh, teenagers and adults, uh, they all have sort of different needs. So you should be uh, mindful of that. And rely on a glossary or a learning journal to track the progress. This is really, really important. And reward the student often. Uh, with feedback. So that could be in the form of scores or badges or tokens at different levels in progression. It's important that they see some moving uh, progression in their studies, that it's not always stagnant or it's um, something tangible that they can actually see that they've progressed and moved on and changed to a, a different level, for example. Many students, of course, may not be confident with their English voice. And this is quite common. So do be careful. Help them out. Encourage them and improve their level of English. That's about it. Let's do a quick summary of everything we've talked about. So we covered that English is not easy. Foreigners find it a struggle and a challenge with pronunciation. We looked at the material preparation and the basic learning strategy and then went into the six steps the, that oh, I use all the time for pronunciation through reading, the specific and practical techniques you should be using. We also looked at a quick example. Then we covered some simple tips to help you along the way. And finally, we reviewed preparing the learner. And that will be it for this short chapter on pronunciation. I hope you gained a little bit of insight. And thank you for listening.